and we are going to start our seminar. It's a pleasure for me to announce our today's speaker, Daria Pushkinska, professor of the Rodan University. And uh, uh, Daria will talk us about free boundaries and salmonella. Very intriguing title, how this uh, dangerous bacteria is related to hysteresis and free boundary problems. So please. Maybe I'm listening to you. Okay. And, and sometimes just the last, the last what I wanted to say is that uh, we will try not to interrupt to you too much during your presentation. But if there are some questions, like to for understanding, maybe uh, we can stop you for a moment. And since you probably don't see the listeners, it's a disadvantage of these teams. I will just have, I will have to interrupt you by voice asking you to answer some questions. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. You can start your presentation. Okay, thank you very much, Vitaly Zikovic, for the introduction, and thank you for the invitation. Uh, I try to speak as uh, easy as possible. And um, uh, today I would like to to tell you about our joint work with Nino Ralseva. We started this pro this started to study this problem about uh, eight years ago and this project is not finished yet. It's <laughs> interesting but it uh, was a really challenging uh, problem for us as for a person who are doing something uh, in free boundary problems. Uh, okay, so first of all, what was the starting point of uh, this uh, problem? Uh, the starting point was the following. We have a Petri dish, put uh, some jelly there, and invite a colony of salmonella for the dinner. And after that, it's uh, just uh, we control uh, the dynamic of the growth of this colony. And the original mathematical formulation for such a problem, it was uh, no, not not original mathematical formulation. Probably first some uh, uh, pictures and results. In fact, first this problem was studied from numerical point of view uh, without any justification. And about ten years later, uh, it comes uh, more and more attractive from theoretical points of view. So, what's happened uh, with this experiment? Until uh, we have uh, enough food and good uh, environment conditions, uh, the number of uh, bacteria is uh, just growing, but growing up to some certain level. And at that level, uh, we have not enough food more, and then bacteria become to die again uh, up to the certain level and uh, we repeat this process again again and again of course with some differences of uh, under some experiments uh, they die completely or they can grow maybe slowly uh, we can say okay up to some limit position, but uh, it was also the possible that we reach upper thresholds and then uh, we can grow or we, we can uh, reduce the number of bacteria and then again to grow and uh, repeat, repeat and repeat. How it was possible to describe such a problem mathematically? The first and simple idea was uh, just introduce uh, three unknown function, namely function B, function U1 and function U2. B was corresponding for the density of non-diffusing bacteria. 
in some okay here uh, i just put uh, the bounded domain q is a subset of rn but in reality it was a subset in r2 so it was some kind considered as a sum disk uh, u1 uh, stands for the concentration of diffusing buffer so it's some ph level and uh, u2 it was uh, denotes the nutrient and it was another unknown function v uh, which uh, corresponds the growth rate of bacteria defined by some hysteresis law and then we have three equation which connect uh, this uh, i'm sorry not three but four uh, unknown parameters here d1 d2 a1 and a2 and as well a were positive given constants and such a problem was supplemented by uh, some initial conditions and uh, it's parabolic problem we also need boundary condition let's say no flux some neumann boundary conditions uh, excuse me uh, mm -hmm. Derek, can i ask some questions or maybe yes of will, course or maybe we will explain the model later but i would like to understand a little bit more the model which is written here mm -hmm. uh, for example uh, what are the unknowns? U1, U2, and what? V or B? And V. V, B. And what about B? Uh, uh, okay. Mm. So equations are written in such a way. So the third equation is with respect to B, because it looks like the derivative is from B. So like on the looks like it's you the unknown functions u1 u2 and b and and v also and what is what is v so this is for not, v, not exactly clear for me yes okay in fact in fact it's uh, some kind of initial formulations so v is um, in fact what we will do with, with this v later uh, with this v, we define it as some uh, function depending on u. By, <clears throat> but the difficulties <throat> was that it would be some kind of hysteretic law. Okay, so so we can, okay, but at the moment we, we understand that, that v is a function of, is a function of it, u, right? It would be function of u uh, of x, and uh, also it would depend yeah. on t, but I show you later. Oh, so okay, it was later. some, some uh, starting uh, problem which uh -huh. was studied numerically, okay. and numerical results were obtained for this one. Yeah, yeah, but just even not result, just the formulation. So can we say that u1 and u2 are some molecules? Mm, U1 and U2. It's uh, concentrations. Yeah, concentrations, but of what? Because it's written of diffusion buffer. So I understand it as a, some molecule and nutrients, yes. probably also some whatever. whatever yes, and some, uh, yes, and nutrients, it's also some. Yes, we can yeah. say that it's some molecule. Yeah, okay. But uh, then let us consider, for example, the first equation. Well, uh, it's already difficult for me to understand it because during like i don't know more than 40 years uh, writing parabolic equations i am used to write the time time derivative with sign plus in one at the left side and all other terms at the at the right side and it's completely confusing for me but okay yes, you I, see I, it's it, there is such a problem there is yeah. such a problem but uh <laughs> it's a main problem uh, then we try to communicate with our collaborator, uh, which originated from dynamical systems. They are yeah. also right okay. as you. <laughs> well, but I, I can make an effort and move well, all these derivatives in different orders, okay? But, uh, yes, the, but the problem, we try also to change and then we <laughs> stop. Yeah, OK, I see. Uh, by I see. ourselves. Yeah, but anyway, in fact, it, yeah. In fact, I should say that um, uh, uh, 
parabolic uh, heat operator, it's just Laplace minus ut. Well, of course, you can write it like that. But anyway, uh, but you, OK, if you make abstraction of the order of this, all these terms, uh, so the first equation is the equa equation for u1, and there is diffusion term. We understand that. Yes. If you put and if you put a right hand side in the left hand side, so we have minus a one b b. Yes, so this, fact, this, we, we will have a time derivative is the diffusion term minus a one exactly. b b. Yeah, b. But, yes. Yeah, yes. Right. So the meaning, the biological meaning of this term is how molecule u one is consumed by bacteria. Is it the meaning of this first equation? Yes. So diffusion is clear, and this nonlinear, well, this product And VB, the rate of growth, uh, uh, the time derivative, yes. Right, but uh, so what I don't understand here, this I looks like I understand, but what I don't understand here, that if it is U1 consumed by bacteria B, usually such kind of consumption is written as a product U1 mm -hmm. times B, not V times B, but U1 times B. So shall, probably, as you say, we will uh, depend sometime later on you, like something like that. Yes, we, we would be function, uh, we, it would be multivalued function of you. Okay, but anyway, can we understand the, in the first two equations, the right hand side as consumption of these molecules by bacteria B? I mean, hmm. the biological meaning of these terms. And uh, OK. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know this answer. OK, <laughs> then we will return. I never thought about this. So it's a good question. <laughs> well, no, uh, well, because because we are trying to, to understand the also not only yes, equations, yes. but the, also the, the main the, problem the, is yeah. the, language here i mean not uh, english or russian it's mathematical language it's uh, yeah yeah no 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 i mean a... biological even not mathematical be, uh, at the moment but rather to understand the biological rather meaning biological. of this yes. of this model okay we'll re maybe return to this question later and also the maybe last then i come to purely pde model it would be easy for me yeah. uh, and okay. then i maybe say you more yeah right uh, so and... now what i take is a starting point so i get such a yeah. problem I look for this, and after that, uh, uh, it was also. So, in fact, what's happened here? Uh, in the simplest case, uh, we just say, okay, that our function V uh, just takes a value, say, let's say, one, if uh, the values of U1 and U2 are large enough, and value let's say minus one, uh, then U1 and U2 are small enough. And uh, in fact, uh, it's defined two curves, let's say gamma on and gamma off here on this picture, on the plane. So here we have a plane U2, U1, U2. And we have two curves, gamma on and gamma off. And uh, the first quadrant here, which just divided into three parts. So M on, M off, and uh, something in between. Uh, so here, if we are in this uh, part of the first quadrant, then uh, V of X and T is always equal one. If we are here under m of, under gamma of, then uh, v is equal minus one. But if we are between, it can be one and or my mi or minus one, depending on trajectory, on which trajectory we come to this region. For instance, we are here, and we come to the mixed region. Here value was one, we come, it's one, 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 until we reach uh, M off region. After that, we come from M 
of region it's minus one minus one minus one minus one stop here we switch again it's one and so on this is uh, our hysteresis uh, if we are move to grow bacteria grows or the bacteria do not grow so here it's always grow here it's always do not grow and in between it can be grow and can be do not grow but uh, so, it depends on yeah so in fact it's hy hysteresis is given uh just by the properties of this function v it's not that it is obtained uh like a solution but it is give, uh, given as uh yes this, this function this v, v right. this this function v this function v it depends on u and it's defi defined by values of u and from and also defined from the history from the history right this yes. is a good one but uh could you please return to the for the uh, moment to the previous slide to see yes. the, the equation yes so so v enters the last equation so the last equation is the equation for b growth of B, so depending on these properties of uh, V, which you just introduced now, B will be growing or not. This is how we should understand yes. that. Yes, okay. Yes, Thanks. yes, it, it depends on, so we can have V is one, so it's a simple first order equation. Again, uh, simple equation, the problem is in between what we have here. Mm -hmm. So we have, in fact, we have uh, several switches. Grows, not grows, grows, not grows. It's uh, uh, such type of problem. So it depends on uh, which trajectory we use uh, to come and to this. this yeah, and this problem was suggested in this work 94, which you cited before, or? Uh, uh, this, even uh, earlier, I show you in which uh, it was suggested, uh, it uh, would be some kind of uh, prehistory of this. Uh, pre <laughs> okay, prehistorical work, yes, very interesting. Yes, yes, yes. It's, okay, it's, thank it's, you. It was, in fact, starting point and uh, why I show you here since uh, you are more in biology than me and then <laughs> maybe for you it would be more understandable yes thank you oh, yes and what we do with such a problem in fact we reduce it to the following prototype so we forget for a while about B. We just work with U. And on the right hand side, instead of what we have uh, with uh, some constant uh, times V and so on, we put uh, some operator H. I uh, show you how we defined it. We defined it in some certain way. And now picture is, uh, in simplest case, can be look as following. So we have two thresholds here, alpha and beta. On the, on the previous picture, it was this curve gamma on and gamma off. But we try to simplify our problem as like as possible, just to, to try to understand it. And uh, if our if our uh, function u is less than alpha then uh, we have value minus one for the operator h for our right hand side and it's still minus one unless we reach the threshold beta in this point we have a jump for another level, for level plus one. And in this case, H of U is plus one, unless we reach our function U, the level alpha, then we fall down. So what's happened here, you see, the problem also is that if we are near alpha, thresholds alpha or the beta, uh, it can happen, we can fall down or jump up, or can nothing happen? 
we can still uh, preserve on this uh, line. And uh, this operator uh, just takes some continuous function uh, and uh, in such a cylinder Q and correspond just plus one and minus one. We assume that U satisfies some boundary condition, so we take into account that it should be Neumann condition, or but also it's possible to consider the case with Dirichlet condition. In fact, for our arguments, it's not so essential. Uh, what is essential? It's initial data. But uh, we have something, uh, we assume, OK, we have some initial distribution function phi. OK, now it's a good question how to define mathematically function this operator H. So it's clear it's something multivalued. How to define it? We define this as the following. Uh, first of all, consider a multivalued function f, which take, uh, which defined for the whole uh, real line. So it's minus one if uh, the argument is less or equal alpha. It's plus one if argument is uh, bigger or equal beta. And it's minus one or plus one if we are between alpha and beta. And now the question, how to define operator H? It's interesting that we can define it uniquely. And how it's do by the following rule. Uh, we have no initial date, we, we know our initial data. So we say, OK, that the values of our operator from the initial moment is given. So I have phi and uh, f from phi, I know such a distribution. So where plus one, where minus one, where switches. And now we try to argue as following. We take a point set and say, OK, let it would be in good defined sets. So it's uh, either the value of u is less or equal alpha or bigger or equal beta, or it's on the initial level. So time here is equal zero. Then for such points, I know how to define hysteresis. You agree? So what's happened if we are in this bed set? If u is bigger as alpha uh, or less than beta and it's a not initial position. So I'm here. So in this case, uh, we do the following. I just uh, fix x. I just would like to define for some x on some t. And I fix x and try to increase time unless I come to the set E, where I know. So, so this is maximum value of time such that this point is element of E. And then for the whole interval, I put the value that it was at this point. Is yeah, it uh, understandable or not? Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so it's exactly the question I asked my, myself <laughs> as I understand it. Already. So let's try, uh, let's try to repeat. So in fact, uh, what you try to implement here is the idea of the memory of the history. So you take yes. you take 
uh, the uh, well uh, mm, this previous previous times for which yes uh, this I just go in fact maybe I say say that I just go down I just just go down unless you see at least at time equal zero I know the value yes yeah yeah no, you, uh, you increase, you don't, you, you don't decrease, you increase time. Okay, whatever you say, yeah, you go I from zero. Time. In fact, I decrease. So, in fact, I stay a time t. I, I fix x. Okay, maybe I should switch uh, for uh, the tablet and maybe just draw. No, yeah. Uh, uh, just yeah, uh, some, some figure could help. But anyway, if you don't feel, then don't, don't have figure, no problem, because otherwise I'm afraid of, as usual, some technical problems. But uh, let's try to understand. So you uh, you take this s less than t when uh, when uh, this point it's, belongs it would belongs be to the biggest s that I yeah. that I stay and this set e. Yeah. So in fact, you see, I have uh, just tried to draw the following picture. I have x and I have t. Yeah. And I uh, consider a point x t. I know that the, for this point, the value of u is uh, in between alpha and beta. Right. And t is not zero. Otherwise, I know it by item two. Yeah. I fix this x and I just uh, slide down for the right. uh, time interval z zero z t, uh, x zero x t. Yeah. So let me understand. Let me repeat, please, uh, the, to make sure that I understand. So you take some point x, and you and you take previous times where uh, when x be, uh, belong to some of this alpha and beta, and so you mm -hmm. put the value of h from the previous times. This I understand. What I don't understand mm -hmm. uh, is that uh, why are we sure that uh, that there is a unique value because previous times can be both alpha alpha and beta what we do in this case or how we can exclude yes, this but case. i choose the maximum values no but if there is a sequence of them conversion uh, uh, okay this is the sequence okay it can be i just uh, move up from zero to time yeah to and and you have and you have alpha beta alpha beta alpha beta alpha beta i find convergent the, to the last beta and it would be beta no, if if it is if there is the last, but if there is an infinite sequence conversion of alpha and beta conversion to uh, yes, this, so much uh, how to say you mean that uh, infinite for some I have continuous function u. Yeah, but this is a, this is a question. How so? I understand that kind of exotic situation. Can we exclude? This exotic situations. I mean, Such from the mathematical with respect yeah. to time. Yes, so it's uh, much more problematic. What's happened with x? With mm -hmm. x, I could not exclude it, mm -hmm. but with time t, yes. Otherwise, I lost my uh, continuity. Yeah, but okay. Assuming that it is possible to prove that such the solution is continuous. Then indeed we can uh, the solution such. would be continuous since we prove the existence in uh, Sobolev space. Mm -hmm. This Q is bigger than N. We prove I, I show you so we uh, it's it's you you are you are right. It's it's a problem. This problem is not very good defined. And uh, I uh, show a few slides later what is the main difficulty there. Okay, so I think that but at the moment we understand. And yes. Yes. We have. But for to make sure that yeah, but to make sure that uh, our audience also follow our discussion, to make it simple, uh, we take uh, the value of this h at the point x as in the previous time points simplifier of course s in the previous time time points when it was alpha, uh, either alpha or beta yes uh, uh, it's it can happen that uh, we just uh, find such a point then we come to zero okay not a problem okay good so Thank we you. have a whole line uh, with the same values uh, do not worry 
Okay, we will not. <laughs> yes, don't worry. It's that's possible. And what's happened after that? The, okay, moment. What is? Okay, and now the answer why uh, we uh, are sure that our uh, solutions would be continuous. Uh, we consider here the so-called strong uh, solutions. So it would be solutions from anisotropic Sobolev spaces. Uh, for persons who are not familiar with such uh, Sobolev spaces, so it's a functions which have a time derivative from the space LQ. And the uh, second order derivatives with respect to spatial variables also from LQ. Uh, such functions should satisfy our equation almost everywhere. And uh, U uh, satisfies the initial conditions as well as the boundary conditions in the sense of traces. And it is known that such uh, uh, functions uh, by embedding theorem is C1 plus alpha. So it's a little bit better than C1. C1 plus alpha with respect to what? X or T? Probably uh, C1 plus alpha with respect for S, uh, C1 half uh, uh, and C1 half with respect to T. So that's uh, one, one, one half, one half plus, plus, plus something. Uh, uh, right? One half plus alpha half, yes. Plus something. Yes. Okay. And this, and this Q and uh, are chosen in such a way to satisfy embedding theorems, right? Yes. Yes, yeah. yes. So, so we are working in such a space. It's so-called strong solutions. Yeah. And uh, uh, what we have uh, here. Um, well, uh, almost strong. Well, it, well, in, at least uh, you know. I learned like all the series, like many many years ago exactly with the books by uh, Ralsova, Ladizhetskaya, okay, the elliptic equations, parabolic equations, whatever. Well, uh, I'm used to say about strong solution where uh, this first derivative and second derivative uh, are continuous, not, well, not in the sense of so But equations. they, but you, you see, they are continuous. It's even better as continuous. So no, 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 not functions, say. sorry, not functions, but derivatives. Yeah, but deriv ah, but derivative. So, but the spatial gradient is continuous. Yeah, right. Okay. Yes. Time derivative it's not necessary, but uh, space derivative is continuous. So that's uh, this we have such a problem. Okay. And uh, okay, Salmonella we have hysteresis we have. How we come to the free boundary? Uh, due to our definition of the hysteresis operator H, we can see that a jump of the right hand side of this H can happen only on the thresholds. And uh, moreover, we have uh, two types of jumps, jump down and jump up. Uh, jump down is from 1 to minus 1. It's just possible on the threshold alpha. And the jump up from minus 1 to 1 is possible on the thresholds beta. And, uh, uh, and in fact, uh, such a definition just excludes some interesting case alpha equals beta from our consideration. Uh, but uh, should, what should I say that if alpha is equal beta, then such a problem is uh, well studied is the so-called two-phase parabolic free boundary problem. So if we exclude such a case, it's uh, not a big deal. And since we have uh, such uh, jumps, the right hand side is a discontinuous function. It depends on u. And uh, 
the problem is that from beginning location of interfaces, uh, we have several regions. Uh, in some regions, right hand side take value one, in other minus one. And uh, where, uh, which region we have, it's a priori unknown. So interfaces between these regions can be considered as a free boundaries. So we have our problem as a free boundary problem. We can treat it in such way. Is this understandable or not? Well, uh, I think that it's, well, at least for me, I don't know about everybody, of course, but for me, it's uh, at the moment, it's understandable. And I am looking forward to see how this free boundary free boundaries will move. <laughs> I it think will be like we, it would be a little bit terrible, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> I should say we will see. We, we will see how they move. That it would be terrible. Yeah. Okay. And uh, such a problem. Uh, in fact, uh, it's not only case of Salmonella. Uh, in fact, we have a lot of applications uh, uh, in uh, many processes where we have two types of substances. One is diffusive, another one is non-diffusive. And the interaction happens uh, due to hysteresis law. Where it can happen? It can happen in heating cooling system. So just try to image we have a uh, room and uh, with air condition so we reduce our temperature until some certain level then we stop our conditioning and uh, slowly temperature is again warm and we again have to on uh, a condition or heating uh, you can choose is it warm or cold outside uh, then uh, some kind of metabolic processes, uh, population dynamics. So we might have uh, some region where we have a very good uh, job uh, conditions and then uh, people come there, the number of uh, people who live in this area just growing, but up to the certain li limit, may what's happened? Uh, bad economical situation on some other things and then uh, we have not enough job for all people and uh, number of inhabitants goes down and so on and so on and also such problem can also happen in some financing models so it's exactly what we discussed with anastasia yesterday so uh, we have the same mathematics for many things uh, in our world uh, and now concerning prehistory, so the first publication uh, uh, goes back to 1980. It was Hoppenstedt and Jaeger, and it was continued with uh, one paper with Hoppenstedt, Jaeger and Pepe, uh, 84. So they introduced this hysteresis model for bacteria growth. They study patterns, uh, what, uh, which uh, were observable, and uh, make some numerical simulations. And uh, almost at the same time, uh, we have uh, publications from persons who are more involved to the study problem with hysteresis. It was Alt and Vicentin. Both study global existence in a special class of weak solutions. The difference was that Alt uh, studied one space dimensional case and Vicentin multi space dimensional case. Uh, also, what is interesting in the ALT paper, it's possible to find examples of non-uniqueness and non-stability. Such examples were discussed there. Uh, I mentioned here in the papers for ALT and Vicentin, uh, I uh, mentioned weak solutions. 
what was the reason for this? We are study strong, but uh, they study weak. Uh, and uh, the problem is that, uh, okay, where is this? this? That's here. Yes, here. And the problem is uh, that our hysteresis operator, then I, I mentioned that it was not very good formulated. It's not close in uh, topology which associated with parabolic PDE. And they try to avoid such a difficult by replacing uh, this uh, hysteresis definition by uh, can, uh, some uh, better definition, the so-called um, continuous uh, hysteresis operator. The difference between two definitions was the following. Uh, they allow uh, to admit any value from the whole interval minus one uh, one uh, on the set uh, u less uh, or equal alpha uh, bigger or equal alpha less or equal beta. So if we are in this uh, region, then we can take any value. I don't know where I jump. Maybe I jump for the left green and then stay here unless uh, reach the value beta. Or maybe the upper green and again stay here. Uh, it's uh, more multi-valued operator. And uh, such an operator, it was uh, closed. Uh, it was a closure of our definition in some corresponding quick topology. This is the reason why uh, they introduced some model and why they concentrated on this. Okay, are you hear me? Uh, well, it, it was it was kind of a break during several seconds, but now it's okay. It's okay. Uh, so, uh, I mean, you have heard, and uh, Vicentin also considered uh, this uh, limit case uh, where alpha equal beta, where we coincide to thresholds. Uh, but uh, again, he replaced our strong uh, hysteresis operator with this continuous hysteresis. And it was actually two-phase parabolic problem, which was well studied. Okay, we are here. Okay, and uh, in the this century, so why should modern history, uh, such a problem in our formulation uh, or with some small variations were studied first in the paper of Gurevich, Jäger, Kubachevsky, 2009. Uh, they considered thermocontrol problem with this type of switches and they studied solvability and periodicity of solutions. And exactly in our formulation, it was several publications. So here I consider the most uh, essential one. Gurevich, Shamin, Tikhomirov, and Gurevich. So what they proved? They proved local existence and uh, continuously dependence on initial data for one space dimensional case. And uh, in the second paper, it was proved uniqueness. The small uh, detail, they assumed that solution has a transversality properties. Uh, so what does it mean? It means, so in very simple explanation, uh, 
that solution has a non-vanishing spatial gradient on the free boundary. So, in fact, they started from the assumption that the initial data has non-vanishing spatial gradient, and they prove existence in uniqueness in, uh, it was local existence. What does it mean? It exists unless uh, solution uh, preserves these uh, transversality properties. And also it was done for the case N equal one, just for one space dimensional case. Okay. And uh, and I told that 80 years ago we joined to the uh, team of Gurevich and Tikhomirov and try to consider this problem with the knowledge that we have at least existence and uniqueness for a transversal case and uh, we are more interesting the questions concerning uh, free boundaries. So the question that which structure has a free boundary? How regular is solution? And how regular is the free boundary? Uh, uh, we don't suppose that for our arguments, it was not essential that our solution have these transversality properties. What does it mean? So if solution has this transversality property, then we know that uh, there is local existence and uniqueness and uh, we are free to review. If we have no such a property, then our results are condition one in the sense that, OK, if such a solution exists, then it should be has the following properties. Uh, such uh, formulation, such situation uh, quite often happens in the theory of free boundary problem. Uh, and uh, it's not quite unusual. In fact, for many parabolic problems, we prove uh, this regularity results uh, in this conditional form. Uh, so, as a standard in the theory of free boundaries, uh, we do not uh, assume uh, a priori assumptions about the free boundaries no assumptions at all. In general, we consider the case that n is bigger or equal one, and what only we assume that our solution is bounded. The reason for this, okay, we need at least one starting point, something. Okay, uh, what uh, something unusual and usual here with our questions? Uh, the question is how regular is U? Is a standard question for the free boundary uh, problems, and uh, the reason is the following. Okay, we solve our problem in some certain space. Uh, it was this Sobolev space, W21Q. But we try to improve this regularity and show that there exists the optimal one. So in fact, it's W to one infinity. We need Lipschitz. Uh, just uh, to be able to study regularity of the free boundary. Uh, so this question two and question three, it's uh, the standard one uh, for many free boundary problems. Unusual is the question one. It was a big surprise for us that uh, the structure of free boundary in this problem is, uh, it was not unusual, was not usual for us. And What's happened exactly? 
I don't know what this is. Yeah. OK, let's start with the structure of free boundary. Uh, we say that free boundary is the interface between uh, uh, the set where the hysteresis operator is equal plus one or minus one. So free boundary, it's only the interface between two different phases. And we introduce special notations. Uh, we will need uh, gamma alpha and gamma beta, which is uh, intersections of free boundary with level sets U is equal alpha and U is equal beta. What is interesting is that level set are not always free boundaries. Uh, what can happen? I show you a picture maybe a few minutes later. The problem is, if the level set, it doesn't matter, u equal alpha or u equal beta, is not locally a t-graph, then a part of this level set may occur inside uh, omega minus where the hysteresis operator is minus one. So we divide uh, the whole omega uh, for two sets, omega minus and omega plus. And similar statement we can make for the second level set. Uh, what means the graph? Uh, OK, maybe I just move here. We may have such a case. We are. Let's try to understand. OK, we have omega plus where hysteresis is plus one. We have omega minus where hysteresis is minus one. And level set u equal alpha. So it's not graph in time direction. It's multivalued. Yeah, a graph, a graph, you mean just a uh, uh, univoc function, yes? Yes. Okay. And what, wh why that's happened? We are here. I cross the level uh, set u equal alpha, but I have no change of the phases. And this is exactly such a picture. Yeah, so, uh, so this region bounded by the dashed line, it's where yeah. you have this gisteresis. Uh, yes, but in fact, in fact, what, what we have here, you see, I am here with my hysteresis on this red line. Uh, I am can be here, can be here. It's different values of u. Here is uh, the phase space, so it's x on t. And I say, OK, point in omega minus that u of this x on t is minus uh, h of u of x of t is minus one. I'm here. Or I'm here in this uh, white part, then the u of h of u of x of t is plus one. And if uh, here I could not have uh, the value u equal alpha. So it can be here, here it's uh, a, a free boundary. This is a part of free boundary, this one. Here I have the change of the phases. Here is a part of free boundary. I am again change of the phases. Then here it's again the level set u is equal alpha. But here is no change of the phases, so it's not, not a free boundary. OK, how it can the question, how then we can separate two sets, omega plus and omega minus. OK, I need some vertical. Here and the same story here. OK, I have omega plus, omega plus, omega minus and here. 
u u equal beta it's uh free boundary i have a change of the phases here not here i was an omega plus and i still stay in omega plus so this uh, red dash is not a free boundary it's level set but not a free boundary this correspond to this case and again how we can separate it just with some vertical parts so if we go back here uh, such a simple picture is just for one space dimensional case but we also consider multi-space dimensional case so then gamma can contain some cylindrical surface and the generatrix of this cylinder just parallel to time axis and we will denote uh, by gamma v the set of all points uh, which are belongs to such vertical parts of gamma and in general it's a difficulty for us that uh, this gamma v are not level sets it's not level set u equal alpha is not level set u equal beta Here is level set, here is level set, here not. Again, here level set, here level set, here not. Okay, I think that it's more or less clear. So it's transi transition in between the, the point, well, changes the value between alpha and beta, and beta right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the, the changes is just uh, if we have some jumps of the hysteresis. If not, uh, nothing happened. OK. And uh, so the whole free boundary is in the union of uh, three sets. Gamma alpha, so it's level set U equal alpha and the uh, changes of phase. Gamma beta, it's level set U equal beta. And uh, at the same time, uh, 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 interface between two phases and gamma v and about this about this gamma v i have no information so it's just vertical part uh, or cylindri cylinders uh, surface with the uh, generatrix parallel to time axis and concerning gamma alpha and gamma beta uh, we may have also some interesting uh, information so we can have uh, again different uh, contributors so gamma alpha zero this is gamma alpha uh, uh, which contains point where spatial gradient is zero and rest gamma alpha star and uh, in fact we what we can get immediately we immediately can get okay let's say that gamma zero it's uh, free boundary without vertical part where gradient is zero and free boundary without vertical part uh nah, it's just free boundary where gradient is not zero So it's just union of this uh, um, set and the corresponding set for gamma beta. Then what we can immediately show that gamma star without uh, vertical parts would be locally C1 surface. Uh, we can do it uh, sufficiently easily, uh, so using uh, the so-called von Mises transform and uh, implicit uh, function theory. So it's it's really uh, nice and easy uh, things, and uh, maybe serve as some exercises for second year students which study analysis.
it's possible to show quite fast. And uh, with gamma zero, it's possible to prove something uh, that it's also would be regular part uh, if uh, the sets where u is equal alpha and u is equal beta sufficiently dig. What I mean here, we can say, OK, if here in the neighborhood of point on gamma alpha, on gamma alpha zero, where the gradient is zero, the set where u equal alpha is sufficiently dig, then it's also possible that in neighborhood of this point, gamma alpha is uh, regular. It's also possible to show. The main problem is this vertical parts. We call it pathological, invisible, uh, vertical part of the free boundary. And we have no information about the values of U on this uh, part of free boundary. And uh, another difficulty is that uh, it doesn't matter which direction I choose. And if I can see the uh, derivative on these directions and takes its positive and negative parts, then in general, near vertical parts of the uh, this uh, vertical parts of the free boundary it would be in general not subcaloric functions and it's uh, real difficulties since we use uh, some technical things some kind of monotonicity formula but subcaloricity for directional derivatives is uh, <laughs> necessary condition. Uh, what, what means subcaloric? Truly speaking, I don't know this terminology. Uh, subcaloric, so I take a uh, heat uh, operator for uh, positive and negative parts, and mm -hmm. it would be have a sign. Mm -hmm. So uh, what, what you it's, say? It's, it's uh, analog for some harmonicity. It give, uh, there are harmonic functions, there are subharmonic functions, so it's have a sign. Ah, a sign. Okay, I did not understand the word. Okay, have a sign. Okay, so sign. Uh, uh, okay, you, sometimes we can also call it low and upper functions. Is it? Is it? Uh, yes, what? yes, yes. Ah, okay, it's, it's I, 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 yeah, right. I'm yes. more. I'm more used to this as a term. Yes, it's okay, even okay. more useful for you, but we we have no this. And uh, uh, what is? Ah, okay, and. Uh, Additional difficulties here. Uh, we could not say nothing about densities of these gamma verticals, of these vertical parts. I mean that they, it's not necessary, in fact, that this, there we, we are, these vertical parts would be just connect uh, level sets. It's not excluded that we started with these vertical uh, things immediately uh, from uh, uh, time equal zero and just go up. And the problem is that we have no reason to say, OK, we have some uh, density results for these uh, vertical things. For instance, uh, it's not excluded. We can put it on the counter set. Yeah. Okay. It's maybe it's maybe comes back to my questions about the sequences conversion. But now uh, I have a different question. Looking at this uh, figure, uh, mm -hmm. if you, for example, for example, take the left one and this blue line, is it necessarily tangent to this? Uh, you see, it's the lower part. To the to the you mean here? No, no, no. From the other side, no, no. Left, left figure, but the, the uh, but not upper point, but left. Uh, sorry, here. lower point. No, go go down. Yeah, go down. Well, yeah, yeah. Here, here. Here. Is it is it tangent here or not? Uh, no idea. Because uh, just like intuitively, it seems to me that it should be tangent from one side. No. Ne 
Not necessarily. Not necessary. Not necessary. We try to uh, infect. In fact, uh, I just show it also later uh, that for one space dimensional case, we have some kind of monotonicity of uh, the free boundaries. But uh, how it's uh, contact here, we try to find some contradictions uh, with the uh, Hobbes principle and some yeah, right. elementary yes. things now. Uh -huh. Uh, no, it's, uh, I don't know, it's a mystery. <laughs> really. We spent a lot of time for this problem with a big group, and uh, this is uh, only what uh, we have right now in this direction. And also with, uh, I, I told you that it's so, 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 but it's after some <laughs> long investigation, I'm sorry. Yeah. But strange, since definition itself, it was not very, uh, the reason is that, okay, uh, there is an idea that maybe if we say that uh, one of the value of this historic operator would be zero, Maybe it's we will have some hope to to have something better as here, and just play for this zero. But for two non-zero branches, uh, what we have? Okay, and uh, concerning the optimal regularity of view, in this here situation, it's. Uh, a little bit better. So what is obvious? If we are inside uh, the sets omega plus and omega minus, then we have a nice situation USC infinity. The jumps can happen only on the free boundary. We know the example. So in fact, uh, where we can uh, have broke, uh, we have broken second derivative, it's not excluded, or time derivative. So, and some parts of the free boundaries can happen jumps. So the pos best possible regularity is uh, that I mentioned W to one infinity locally, but all such results are locally, and this is standard for the free boundary theory. Uh, what we get can get immediately. If we apply the general PDE theory, let's see, we have heat operator and bounded right hand side. Then the general parabolic theory say us immediately, then we will have uh, such uh, regularity. Hmm? Uh, but our aim just to prove that alpha is equal one. It's not obvious and it uh, takes some efforts, but it's necessary step for further study the regularity of the free boundary, especially for study gamma zero, the set of free boundary, which is level set and the gradient free boundary level set and gradient is zero. Without this, uh, we could not uh, say something. And such a result we get, but with some remark. So assume that we are in our case, we have our problem, and we take some arbitrary point not on the free boundary. Then we get such an estimate. It's which depends the, only on the difference between our thresholds, beta minus alpha. Uh, M is the maximum of U from our assumptions. Epsilon is the distance from the lateral surface. And unfortunately, we have this row zero. Rho zero is a parabolic distance from our point to these verticals. So you see, 
this constant C is uniform, so that means it does not depend on the parabolic distance from our point to gamma zero and to gamma star. But this dependence we cannot remove for n bigger than one. For n equal one, we can remove it. For n, n bigger than one, it's it stays. I know, but yeah. yeah, but this is important because yeah, for yeah. if you can get it already for n equal one, I think it's already it's already good result. Yeah, yeah. For, for for n equal one, we can remove it. But for 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 bigger, but just what is the difference? Such a uh, what is the difference here between n equal one and larger one than one? It's because of embedding theorem, so or, or something different. No, it's uh, just because of geometry. Since uh, uh -huh. we, for n equal one, we have just intervals. For uh -huh. n bigger than one, we have cylindrical surface. And what? Why, uh, why cylindrical surfaces are worse than intervals? Uh, um, why cylindrical surfaces are worse than intervals? Uh, moment. Uh, it's uh, embedded. It was a embedding theory, yeah, embedding right. theory RAS and uh, some uh, technical uh, arguments uh, which we use here with geometric nature. OK, and so I uh, I thought that maybe I show you arguments and then I wrote of them. I understand that it uh, would be worse, so yeah. <laughs> It would be too complicated for person who yeah. are not familiar with this activity. So I just would like to prefer just the results only. OK, and uh, this is that I told you concerning the regularity. I mentioned such results and uh, outside of vertical parts, we have uh, necessary regularity. It's uh, some also not so bad results and what we can also show what we can also show that in one space dimensional case and with transversal initial condition so that means that uh, uh, initial condition has no vanishing gradient gradient is not zero spatial gradient then we can show the following uh, we have uniform estimates. This dependence uh, from the distance to the lateral surface of our cylinder, it's uh, not critical one. Since we get uh, this estimates in smaller cylinder inside. It's uh, some standard thing, so it's uh, not too bad. And we can also show that uh, uh, our free boundary has some kind of monotone behavior. So it's uh, either just vertical lines which uh, started from what is possible. We started here and then vertical lines uh, up to the infinity. That can happen. But if it's uh, how to say So not just uh, vertical line. So it would be union of the finite number of uh, vertical lines and uh, uh, corresponding uh, level sets. Behavior would be monotone. But in uh, this example, sorry, in this example, which you show here uh, in this figure, uh, after some time, your free boundary disappears, right? Yeah, no, but here I will just not stop. So we can uh, start, uh, we can come back to the switch for time x will zero. Yeah, OK, no, but if you ah, move you mean here, up, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. here it's also possible, yes, that it's disappeared after some time. I should say that this result are more or less local one. So uh, we could not guarantee that it would be for some sufficiently large time t. So it's we are working in the neighborhood of the initial state. 
here. But uh, there are versions, so we can have uh, just uh, a vertical line started from the t equals zero. Uh, we may have uh, some uh, combinations and then vertical lines or this one. Yes. And this is uh, OK. And uh, what I would also mention, some open problems uh, to prove existence or non-existence uh, of strong solutions with uh, non-transversal initial conditions. It's uh, old open questions. Uh, there is a conjecture that in this case uh, we have non-existence, but uh, try several times without big success to prove this. And second, uh, uh, open... sorry, sorry, when you say non-existence, you mean particular in some particular space, right? In this uh, W to one space, right? Or... Yes, in this in this W to one Q. Yes, of course, yeah. of course, of course. OK, you see how to, we can survive in these open questions. Uh, uh, either just uh, construct a counterexample that we have some conditions and solutions is not exist. Yes or uh, make some changes for definition of uh, this uh, hysteresis operator. One possible uh, relaxing of hysteresis operator is that uh, just say, OK, maybe it would be value not, not uh, minus one plus one, and for instance, one and zero. Uh, or another relaxing of the definition of hysteresis operator. Another open question is definition of transversality property for multi-space solutions. So it's clear how to say for one space dimensional case, but for multi-space dimensional case, it's uh, not clear how to formulate it correctly. What about normal derivative? Yes, yes. Normal yes. derivative, uh, it would to, be... To the, to the boundary, I mean. Uh, to the boundary, but you see the boundary would be surface and uh, maybe normal derivative would be not enough. Maybe not just normal, maybe something with uh, main curvature and something like this. But it's uh, just uh, conjecture. In fact, here the situation is the following. And what I can also show, it's uh, references for publications uh, which were made here. Who started? And the last slide. Oh, I guess I'm okay. almost in time. I'm almost in time. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but uh, I interrupted you all the time. So. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's a good idea. In fact, if it's something no, you know, not clear. Yeah, yeah first of all, it's, uh, yeah, but then, you know, because of this, in teams, you don't see the audience. Uh, personally, yes, I don't, I don't like see it. the just audience, speaking, and then uh, just yeah, speaking to the, the Yeah, speaking to the screen, nobody yes. reacts. You don't know. It's, it, in fact, what is happening is kind of not very pleasant. Right? Yes, yes, maybe somebody <laughs> prepare uh, dinner or even <laughs> <laughs> to have a couple of drinks. Yeah. So, so when we have such informal uh, seminars, so it's, I, I think that sometimes to have some small discussion, it can be. Uh, no, no, okay. it's, 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 it's fine. And you see, and, in fact, in uh, Smirnov seminar in St. Petersburg, it's uh, uh, always happened in real life as well. Yeah, they okay, interrupted. Okay. Uh, OK, thank you very much. You really uh, uh, did a very interesting talk and we, you, you kept us really just uh, interested and involved and all the time I was trying to understand what you are <laughs> what you are speaking about <laughs> but you see it's the main problem uh, if, then you try to communicate with different groups <laughs> you yeah. have such a case 
Okay, so maybe we have some some more questions. So yes, please, welcome. in the audience, uh, well, people are some, well. In fact, most most uh, part of our audience are young students, sometimes a little bit shy. So, uh, in fact, I have two more questions. Mm -hmm. You started your presentation saying that it's a joint work with uh, uh, Nina Oralcova. Uh, and you uh, started it eight years uh, ago. Oh, yes. I can I conclude from that that the work still continues, so she is still alive, right? Yes, she is still <laughs> okay. alive, and in fact, right now uh, we try to get a, a different proof for, for existence theorem uh, for this transversal case. Since the proof that it was made by Gurevich, Shamin, and Tikhomirov, they involved uh, the ideas from dynamical systems. Uh -huh. And for us, it's a little bit unusual, and we try to give alternative proof. How old is so, she? 88. 88, oh. 88. Excellent. 88 plus something. 88 plus, plus, plus epsilon, yes. We know it from, from embedded theorems. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, no, it's uh, very it's nice to, to prove. Yes, uh, we try to sometimes. Yes, and uh, sometimes uh, she said, OK, I wouldn't like to see this uh, stupid hysteresis anymore. But after <laughs> one week, she called again back, OK, and what about our progress? I say it's very difficult. <laughs> Fast epsilon. <laughs> no, but it's excellent to prove mathematical theorem at, well, at this age. Uh, yes, but uh, it's uh, what uh, uh, I always uh, admire how it's interesting for her. Yeah. So it's part of her life. Now, but what uh, what I want to say is that it's very good for our mental and brain health, proven mathematical theorem. It keeps us alive. So I really recommend everybody to prove mathematical theorems if you yes. want to lead, to have a long and happy life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, and my second question is also kind of expected. What about numerical simulations? I was I was expecting that you will tell us something about numerical simulations. Uh, this numerical simulation is the following. Uh, the first was made by uh, Hoppenstadt, Jaeger, Poppe, and so on. After that, Gurevich and Tikhomirov tried to um, did some uh, numerical simulations. And they found quite interesting effect, which called rattling. They try to come to the free boundary point and try to use um, uh, small and small uh, steps. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, uh, some very strange uh, in simulator. It was a very strange changes. Plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, one. Tuck, 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 tuck. And do you remember my first question about yes, this? Yes, 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 yes. But it was not in time. It was in X. In X. Okay. Yes, and it was not not always happened, but for some certain uh, but, initial condition. Ah, uh, okay. So it's not it's not numerical, say, uh, artifact or error. It's a real real thing. Of, our conjecture that exactly we try to get this vertical lines uh -huh. there. Mm. And in near this vertical lines, uh, it uh, doesn't matter how small would be your steps, mm. your mesh, it would be tsk, 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 tsk. Uh, well, but what do you think? Is it numerical instability because of this vertical lines or what it is in fact? You don't um, some kind of instability, but what to do with this? Uh, yeah. I plan to visit in November Tikhomirov. He is now in Essen. <laughs> it would be yeah. also some kind of a discussion. Yeah. Our well, standard uh, discussion. Yeah, usually, usually people say in this case, try some kind of uh, regularization, but I don't know what kind of what regularization kind? Yes. Can, can work. This would be my question, what kind you suggest? <laughs> <laughs> in general, I also know that. <laughs> yeah.
Uh, yes, and uh, after that, it was no more attempt. So we are more and more think about to correct a little bit definition of uh, hysteresis. Maybe it's too strong. Maybe it's too strong. But starting point, which we started from reaction diffusion, that's your biology. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the equation you can see there, and uh, it's uh, without, it's just uh, diffusion term, and this hysteresis term, you don't have other terms in the equation. Yeah, right? we have no other terms. No. Yes, okay. no, 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 we have no other terms. And of course, well, and the problem, uh, you started with, uh, with three equations, uh, is it also studied or just only one equation? Because all this literature you, you showed uh, it's for one equation. Just right? for one equation, just for one. Uh, so they all consider this prototype. All three, sorry. <laughs> we are still <laughs> well if we if we have plenty of years like, like if 80 88 uh, it's kind of a, still possible to do it so we have we have, we have still some time <laughs> <laughs> and many other you problems. you still have some you have plenty of time in front of you <laughs> yes, yes then i would be 88 <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, Dara, thank you very much for this interesting thank and uh, lo lo lovely talk. I see that no other questions in the audience. So thanks again and thanks to everybody. Don't uh, don't forget that we have our seminar every week or almost, so you are very welcome to come back and to listen also to other speakers. And of course, someday, well, because you suggested several different topics, so we'll come. <laughs> Life is long till 88. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, thanks to everybody and have a good day. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.